Today I'm coming to you with a request from one of our YouTubers, somebody who's been watching and has requested for a presentation on the napkins. I'm so happy that you are all enjoying our videos. I love the comments that you drop to us. Keep them coming. And of course, if you have any requests, any material you'd like to learn, you can leave a comment below and I'll be happy to be back and show you. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, make sure that you subscribe right now so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, this is a really easy activity that you would be able to conduct in your house and you can start right away because all you need are basic napkins. Now these ones are a little bit smaller because they're for children, but if you have napkins at home that are a bit bigger, no problem at all, you can start with those. I'm just going to explain the material to you so you have an idea what we're working with and then you'll be able to prepare your materials accordingly as well. I just like you to have a look at the napkins so that when you're making them you have a very clear idea. Napkin number one has a straight line going from left to right, fold in half. Napkin number two has a diagonal line folding in half. Napkin number three has two lines. One is vertical and one is horizontal, again folding in quarters now. And napkin number four has two lines on the diagonal folding in a quarter. Today I'd like to teach you how to unfold and fold napkins. Watch me first and then you'll have a turn to try. Would you like to try? So that's how we present folding of napkins to children. There are many steps. I would advise you to watch this one or two times more so that you don't miss out on anything. In fact, this material is one of those that when I teach it to my students when we're in training, this is something that they have to repeat a few times because there are a few steps. We are tracing the lines two or three times in certain cases so that the children remember 
and they feel, you know, that is the control of error here. That line which they feel is the control of error that, that tells them whether they've done it correctly or whether they need to redo it. Now on the surface, this is a brilliant activity. It is a folding activity and the children are learning how to fold napkins, which is very useful, lending to their independence and developing of self-help skills. Now, underneath that, let's look at what else they're learning. They are using these fingers again, so their pincer grip is being refined. Their eye-hand coordination is also being refined, which is going to help them with their literacy skills. There are a lot of steps to this activity. They really have to concentrate, so that focus is being developed for later activities when they need that deep concentration. Did you realize that this activity also teaches them about geometry and fractions because of the shapes that are involved, because of the folding and halving of certain things. This is preparing them for later on when they work with fractions and with geometry. Isn't that fun and isn't that interesting for children? Now when the children have mastered this activity and they're enjoying doing it and you want to offer them more in this area, something more challenging, something a little bit varied, then you can take them to origami. That's a great way to extend this activity. So you can intro introduce them to simple origami at first and then go on to more complex forms of origami. But that's just the beginning. We can then take them into learning how to fold simple items of clothing. In our classrooms, we start with socks. We get pairs of baby socks, you know, in different colors or different patterns, and we put them in a basket. So now what the child has to do first is match the color or the pattern, and then we teach them how to roll them into balls. So that's a very simple and easy activity. From there, you can make it more complex. You could teach them how to roll, fold a t-shirt. You could go into, you know, the button-up shirts. Those are a bit harder. Going into trousers or skirts. You can take it wherever you want. And then we could even go into teaching them how to fold napkins into those fancy styles that you see in restaurants. It's similar to origami as well. So when you see that your child is enjoying this, build on it give them more activities and then the next step we can go further is to teach them how to wrap a present there's a lot of folding involved in that in case you didn't realize and so they can learn how to fold a present there are many steps there because they would be learning about cutting cello tape so you want to make sure that they have covered that skill to top it off the cherry on the cake you could then let them tie a bow on it once they've completed the bow frame. So this is a multi-step extension that you could introduce your children to that would come after the folding of napkins. Now, sometimes uh, when you introduce four napkins to a child, it might be a, a little bit too much for them. This activity is typically for a child above three years. Now, when you introduce it, you might choose to just introduce the napkins that are the half fold. You don't have to introduce the quarter fold straight away. Just start with the, new, uh, the two napkins, the half fold, let the child master that. And then later, maybe when they're three and a half or four years, then you can introduce the quarter fold because there are more steps to that. That's up to you to gauge your child's level and you know how skilled they are and how ready they are. Every child is very unique. It's our observations that will tell us what steps to present next. Let's talk a little bit about preparing the material. When you are preparing your material, be careful to choose the fabric wisely. We don't want something that crumples very easily. We don't want something too soft. This is something that you know holds well. And when we fold it, it's easy, it folds down. I've had experience where some of my students have used felt. And when you fold it, it automatically flips open again, all right? So make sure that you choose something that is a little bit sturdy, but also not too stiff and not too soft. Now, you've got to make sure that your stitch is in a contrasting color. It should stand out 
from the actual fabric you've chosen, I would always suggest going with a solid fabric as opposed to a print when you're starting. And make sure the line is thick so when they run their fingers over it, they can feel that line, okay? It shouldn't be just a single stitch, it should be a double stitch, something that's a bit thick. It's not very difficult to make. You can start with a 15 um, centimeters square or even 20 centimeters square. That's fine. If you want to go a little bit smaller, if your children are younger, you can do that as well. So I wish you luck trying out this material at home. Um, don't forget to like our video and keep coming back to watch. I've enjoyed teaching you and I'm looking forward to coming back with more videos for you. Until we meet again, have a beautiful day.